Hello, I'm Steve. My name's Steve, Professor Steve Mann, and I'm here at what we call University of Ontario Place. Uh, we've built an outdoor classroom out of objects that we found in the lake. Uh, we built a nice chalkboard on the beach with seating and everything, but they came in with uh, heavy industrial earth moving equipment and chainsaws and chopped it all up and hauled it away. But what they've done is they've built us a nice brand new chalkboard here that's about eight feet high and about 800 meters long. I don't know if this is the world's largest chalkboard, but it's certainly quite nice and big. I want to talk today about the Sustainable Technology Society. I've got some Hagaroma chalk here, uh, the best chalk that was ever made in human history. And I got, we have a pretty good chalkboard here. So we're here at University of Ontario Place, what we affectionately call. And we're going to talk about Today, I want to talk about the sustainable technology society. And this is a nexus of three things. Sustainability, which is the environment the earth, water, air, and so on. Technology, which is the virtual, the virtual world, AI, cyber, and so on. And society, which is humanity, governance, law, security, privacy, trust, all of these human institutions. And this is society more broadly, of course, includes other beings. Now, you can think of these three things. So sustainability, let's symbolize it as this blue drop. The color blue represents the environment, that which is around us, the blue yonder the sky, the lake, and so on. Planet Earth is blue, you know? And then technology, we represent that as this green rectangle, which the rectangle symbolizes the computer screen, the green glow of the computer screen, the green glow of the oscilloscope, the cathode ray oscillograph historically, the green glow of the computer screen or television. And the human is represented by the orange or red or pink circle. We're all reddish in some sense, regardless of our race or origin. If you're in a dark room and you put your hand over a light bulb, you'll see red light glowing through it. We all have hemoglobin in our blood that gives us red, so it symbolizes this color. Reddish tones symbolize humanity. And these are linked <laughs> because you see the environment is connected to us and we're connected to the environment and technology is connected to us and we're connected to technology. So these are all linked. To and from each one to the other. And in fact, if I redraw that, let me redraw that like this. If I redraw the, let me put the water drop here. That's the environment. Let me put society or the human here. And let me put technology over here. Now, of course, we can think of it, it's cyclic. It's kind of almost like imagine the cylinder where these two things are connected to and from each to each other. And then of course, this one comes around this way. And so we have first consider the interplay between us and our environment. Technology should never stand in the way of us engaging and interacting with our environment. In other words, sort of we as humans have 
basic needs from our environment, food, water, air, that is food and clean water and fresh air, and uh, sanitation, you know, waste that comes from us back into the environment. So it's a closed loop process. We receive from the environment, we give back to the environment. And informatically, that's also the case. We can sense our environment. A technology should never stop us from sensing our environment. If you imagine a technology like these VR eyeglasses in your living room that block out the real world and keep you away from nature, that's wrong. We want technology that welcomes us to the natural world and, and, and doesn't shut out our environment or the world around us, doesn't shut us off from earth, water, air, and other, other people as well too. So we want the technology to allow us to continue sensing the environment. And we call that unmonopolizing. That's one of the six important fundamental properties. I'll just number that one, that's unmonopolizing. And two, we also want the technology to be unrestrictive of our movement so that we can engage with the environment around us. So for example, if I'm sitting on my phone like this, walking around, bumping into walls, that's restricting me. It's like handcuffs. Technology is like handcuffs. It's, it's preventing us from engaging our environment. You see so many people twisted like pretzels around their computer, bent all up. I think I used to always say, you know, back in the 80s and 90s, that the computer should twist itself around us. I invented something called wearable computing. Uh, people often regard me as the inventor of wearable computing. And so the idea of a wearable computer is it twists itself like a pretzel around you instead of you having to hunch over and twist yourself around it. And in this way, the computer is, is, is unrestricted. The third and fourth properties are human computer interaction. How do we interact with our computer? Well, uh, our technology is both observable and controllable. So it's observable in the sense we can observe it and sense it, and it's controllable in the sense that we can control the technology. So these are properties three and four, observability and controllability. Much of technology senses us. We have surveillance all around us. Surveillance is a French word that has been around for about 200 years. Technology senses us. But it's out of balance if it's a surveillance society. We also need surveillance, S-O-U-S as in sous chef, valence. And that's a relatively new word. It's now in the Oxford English Dictionary, the word surveillance. It's a relatively new word uh, from, from the last you know 30 or 40 years. And so this word, surveillance and surveillance, gives us valence, which is the way that the technology senses us and we can sense the technology. There's also a symmetry, there's also a feedback loop here. And in fact, in the human mind and body, we can think of the mind and the body as interconnected through efferent and afferent nerves that form a closed loop feedback system. And that's really important to have closed loop feedback. So again, there's feedback here, there's feedback here. And likewise, technology and the environment need to be connected as well. The technology should sense and respond to its environment in the in the feedback loop. And so these are properties five and six. So we've got six properties, six fundamental properties, and we call this mercivity. That's the name that we call this mercivity. That's mercivity. Mercivity is the fundamental principle that technology should allow us to connect and be connected, to touch and be touched by our environment. We should be able to touch and be touched by the technology and the technology should be able to, in a sense, touch and be touched by its environment. So we have six fundamental properties of mercivity, also known as humanistic intelligence, human in the loop AI. It's also called humanistic intelligence or HI for short as and it was uh, introduced proceedings of the IEEE 1998 paper published on HI and 
Uh, we have a symposium. We for, since 1998, this will be the 25th annual symposium on on uh, mercivity, otherwise known as physical HCI, physical human computer interaction. We sometimes call it water HCI to emphasize, you know, of these properties to emphasize water here. We often talk about water a lot because it's a very primordial medium. So we often talk about water human computer interaction, water HCI, and the drop, the water drop sort of originates there. But more generally, it's physical HCI. It's earth, water, air, HCI, physical human computer interaction. That's what it's called Mercivity. And we have our 25th annual Mercivity Symposium here in Toronto at University of Toronto on December the 14th. So please join us, mercivity.com. It's our website. Come on out. It's free and open to the public. We used to have it on Ontario Place every year. Uh, but recently now we're having it at the university. It's grown quite a bit bigger. So we're having it at University of Toronto in a large auditorium, MC 102, December 15th, December 14th, December 14th, MC 102. Hope to see you all there. And thank you very much. One, two, three. One, two, three. Ha, 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 ha.